Hey everybody, I am going to work on adding some details to this piece so that you can see how I do it. Um, <clears throat> so starting with color, um, I like to use opposite colors, so teal and red um, are on the opposite of the spectrum on the color wheel, um, darks and lights, so contrast in, in the lightness or darkness of a color. Um, and when I'm using color, uh, one color, I like to use different shades of it, so light to dark as well, and all the mediums in between. Um, so when I pick out the colors that I'm going to use, I'm going to figure out what makes most sense and do I want these words to be red or do I want them to fade into the background that's another question that would be a good thing to think about before I actually start with it and kind of feel like I'm gonna I'm gonna stay with the teal greens um, as colors for them and I'm just going to start coloring in. I can do this with paint, with marker. Um, with, with watercolor. Um, I can do it with one color or many. Also mix colors by putting one layer down and then another layer on top. If you don't have this many colors to work from, you definitely want to be mixing them. And some color pencils mix better than others. The more softer the lead is, or the the color pencil part, the um, <coughs> Excuse me, easier, easier it is to, to mix. You can press hard or light, depending on how vibrant or light you want your colors to be. So if you use the same color that's um, in parts of your painting, they will start to kind of talk to each other, connect with each other in a way that kind of bounces your eye back and forth. So it's kind of fun to work a little bit like that with color. You can also blend the colors to colors on a little shape just by coloring in one part of it with one color and the other part with the other and kind of going back and forth over the other color a little bit. And then mix another color with it if you want. But try to try different ways of, of pressure on your pencil to see what um, how you can affect the color once you start putting it down on the page. I kind of want the words to sort of reflect the sadness that I was feeling on that day that I'm still a little bit feeling. So I picked a, a color that kind of reflects that a little bit. And as you can see, I don't care about going in and out of the lines. I just, um, not with my journals, I'm not as
careful when I'm drawing in my journals because I really want it to be an expression of how I'm feeling. And it doesn't really matter whether or not there's a messy portion of it or a neat portion of it. But you can decide that on your own, what you like and what you want, want to do in your journal because they're all very personal. Actually, it's funny. I just realized that I didn't write sad. I wrote sensitive, which actually are two kind of different words, but the water, the teardrops, that kind of stuff usually symbolize a little sadness or squishiness on my part. This is also my time to kind of decide, do I want to color inside the words, um, the letters? Do I want to add any more color to the swirl? Um, so when I do my details, I definitely kind of play with that. And I feel like I want to play a little bit with adding warm colors to the inside of the words. I have no idea why. There doesn't have to be a reason. And just do what you're feeling. It can be spontaneous. This is also sort of a style that I've kind of created over the years of it's not unique. Um, a lot of people do it. Um, but to just enhance or add more color to your paper to color in some of the shapes that you see. And I see shapes inside of words, so that's kind of where that's coming from. See how I just took this color and did three? I like to do that to spread the color out so that it's not the same um, colors next to each other. I kind of feel like that helps it sparkle a little bit, helps there be like just energy on the page kind of jumping back and forth. Also helps to just kind of ground my mind a little bit as well. So now I'm gonna try to just kind of make a few other lines just to break up the space. that are kind of there, the yellow, whoops, the yellow color in the background, just to make it a little bit more dynamic.
You don't have to copy me with this, but if you want to take some ideas away from it, you absolutely are welcome to. If it helps you in your journaling. This is what I do a lot when I'm looking on the internet is I will absorb kind of ideas from other artists and use them in my own way. All artists work pretty much when we see things, um, or most of us anyway, I can't really speak for all artists, but um, And now something to do in the background as well. I think I'm gonna take a pen. I have some more pens laying around on my desk. And I want a little bit of energy in the background. Although you could just keep it as um, a little bit more plain, um, less adorned, and just keep it that would be a contrast between this and that if you don't want the whole thing to be too busy. But I'm kind of feeling like I want to write a little bit more today. So I'm going to do that. And I'm just going to take one of my skinny black writing utensils.
Okay, so you probably can't see that or read it, which is good. Um, but that felt really good to just write. Stream of consciousness. And I usually do that first um, and then cover it up. But today I was feeling like I could do a layer of it over watercolor because there isn't any pastels that would keep my pen from writing. So if you have pastels down, you'll find that when you use a pen like this, it, um, it will start to clog up the ink from coming out. So you could just use a pencil in that case because that won't clog, um, but you can write with pe pencil over pastel. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to give you a little um, demo on um, how to add some texture, um, another layer, a little bit more dimension, some um, details. I guess, you know, I could keep going with this page. I could probably just keep layering and layering. There's little things that I can do with like gold pens and white. Um, those are usually my last layers, but I think this is enough. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this little extra bonus video and I um, will just keep journaling. So it is one of the things that is helping me keep my mind grounded and um, my heart feeling as okay as it's going to get in those moments when I'm journaling. So I will see you on the flip side.